Hi, we are nursing students from UCI, and we will be presenting CAUTI prevention as our quality improvement project. I'm Christine, and I will be presenting what is a CAUTI. CAUTIs are catheter-associated urinary tract infections. An infection is classified as a CAUTI under CDC guidelines if the patient has the following. An indwelling urinary catheter for more than two calendar days from the date of insertion, one sign or symptom of infection, and a positive urine culture. According to a large cross-sectional apparent cause analysis of CAUTIs, one of the biggest risk factors for CAUTI is the duration of IUCs, and it contributed to about 16.5 of all CAUTI cases. Of 25% of the cases reviewed, infection preventionists and clinical teams stated that IUCs could have been removed earlier. Other risk factors include comorbidities, active infection, fecal incontinence, and lapses in catheter care protocols. According to the CDC, about 15 to 25% of all hospitalized patients have a urinary catheter, meaning all of these patients are at risk for developing a CAUTI. 75% of all hospital-acquired UTIs are associated with urinary catheter use. At UCI, there were a total of 39 CAUTIs in 2020. The goal per unit is to have zero CAUTIs. CAUTIs have been associated with increased morbidity, mortality, healthcare costs, and length of stay. According to a public health report on infections, it is estimated that 69% of all CAUTIs are avoidable. Now, we're going to talk about the prevention of CAUTI and also demonstrate proper Foley and perinocare. care. CAUTI prevention aims to reduce the rate of CAUTI by preventing inappropriate short-term catheter use, promoting nurse-driven timely removal of urinary catheters, and also applying urinary catheter care during placement and maintenance. According to UCI's protocol, the peri area should be cleansed immediately prior to fully insertion. Nurses should provide routine perinal care each shift or as needed with a 2% chlorohexidine CSG wipe and a no rinse foam and soap water if sold. The application of CSG after bathing the peri area and fully causes residual reduction of bacterial flora on the skin and indwelling catheter which can reduce the risk of urinary tract infection. With your non-dominant hand, gently retract the labia to expose the urethromeatus and catheter insertion site. Then using a 2% CSG wipes, cleanse away from the meatus to remove any secretions or incrustations. Start down the center of the meatus first. Then walk outward, always moving from front to back. If the patient is sold, first cleanse the area with a no rinse foam soap before you wipe with a 2% CHG wipe. Next, with a CHG wipe, clean the lower abdomen, pelvic folds, and inner thighs. And use soap and water if the area is soiled. Use a new cloth or wipe each time until the wipe is no longer dirty. While stabilizing the catheter with your non-dominant hand, use your dominant hand to cleanse the catheter in a circular motion along its length for 6 inches. Start where the catheter enters the meatus, then wipe moving outward with a 2% CHG wipe. If sold, First, cleanse the area with a no rinse foam soap. With your non dominant hand, gently retract the foreskin if not circumcised and hold the penis at the shaft just below the glands. With a 2% CHG wipe, cleanse the glands first down to the shaft. scrotum and testicles, and inner thighs. Remember, if the area is soiled, to first use a no-rinse foam cleanser to first cleanse the area before the CHG wipe. Next, stabilize the catheter with your non-dominant hand, starting where, where the catheter meets the meatus, and with a 2% CHG wipe, cleanse the catheter along its length in a circular motion for 6 inches moving outward. Reposition the foreskin as needed. 
So the fully securement device should be replaced weekly and avoid the use of creams, sprays, lotions, and ointments as this can make it difficult to remove the Foley and also can potentially cause a medium for bacteria and negate the effects of the CHG. Remember to document your intervention on EPIC. After following this procedure, you no longer need to document both pericare and Foley care. Selecting pericare implies that both procedures were completed. This is now called quality pericare. I'll continue to talk about alternatives to Foley catheter. There are two types of alternatives, medications and external urinary catheters. For urinary retention, let's talk about a few medications. First, 5-alpha reductase inhibitor stops the growth or shrink the prostate to help the flow of urine. Second, alpha blockers help the flow of urine by treating the symptoms of prostate enlargement, relaxes the muscles in the bladder neck and prostate. Third, antibiotic can be used to treat the infection, which may be the cause of urinary retention. And lastly, a combination of 5-alpha reductase inhibitor and alpha blocker may work better than individual medication alone. Next is external urinary catheter. Warning, these devices are not appropriate for patients with urinary retention. First is pure week. This device is placed between labia of female patient to collect the urine in the collection canister. Previously, this device was commonly used in UCIMC, but it is in transition to change to PrimaFit, which is placed using the same procedure, though there is an adhesive pad that could be attached on the patient's lower abdomen for better securement. For male patients, use Promofit. In addition to Promofit, the condom catheter and quick change can be used for male patients. Though the condom catheter collects the urine and collection bag, the quick change does not. Hi, so I'm going to be going over the nurse's role in preventing cauties. So the first thing we can be doing is using the acute urinary retention algorithm, also known as ARA. And essentially, this helps prevent rushing to in reinserting the Foley catheter after removal. And so the pros of using this is that the nurses know, can follow this guideline as to what to do if the patient has avoided after six hours without having to contact the physician asking them, hey, what do I need to do? And this essentially can save time and confusion from coming back and forth with the physicians. And so we would just follow the guideline, you'd perform the bladder scan and go from there. It's a very helpful tool, and essentially, we would. Um, the goal of it is to prevent needing to insert, reinsert in a Foley catheter. So the second thing nurses can do is making sure they're practicing and advocating preventive measures. So as we talked about earlier, it is imperative to be doing proper perineal and Foley care. And the second thing is making sure for all, we're always checking for alternatives to Foley catheters. So if the patient's on. Um, medication, certain medications that cause urinary retention, we want to see if we can get that, get them off. We just want to be checking and asking ourselves whether or not the Foley's are necessary for the patient anymore. Maybe they were at the beginning of the care, but now not so much. So the third thing that nurses can do is making sure they use proper techniques for collecting the urine samples for the urine cultures. So the first point is making sure we change the Foley if it is greater than or equal to five days old, um, because it must be changed if it's five days older, greater, um, before collecting the urine sample. And then the sec, but uh, before that, if it is a coup day catheter, you wanna make sure that you check in with the physician who put in the order or urology to see if they want you to remove that coup day catheter prior to collecting the urine sample, just because usually coup days are harder to put in. And so for the second point, for the collecting process, the samples should never be from the drainage bag because that's usually contaminated, even if it's a new Foley. And we always want to be in the habit of always getting it from the sample port on the catheter tubing. And so here's just a picture of an example. So over here would be an example where the sample sampling port would be. And over here is a picture from Mosby. This is how we can clamp it in a way. So here we see that they clamped it with a rubber band. And then over here would be the sampling port that we would withdraw the urine once it reaches over here. So the technique for getting the urine sample from the sample port is you want to clamp the tube at least three inches below the sampling port. And then when the urine is visible underneath the access set, you want to clean the port with an alcohol wipe and let it air dry. You don't want to be waving at it to make it dry faster because that defeats the purpose of uh, the alcohol killing all the microbes. And then you want to make sure you use aseptic technique to attach the uncapped syringe to the port. 
then draw out the urine with the syringe and then unclamp the drainage tube. You don't want to forget that. Otherwise, urine can back up into the foley, which can cause further problems. And so I want, we just want to end this presentation with making it, making a note that you are powerful. We as nurses have the power to make a difference in our patient's care and accurate documentation is key to show what you did to um, what you did during your shift to care for the patient. And, and also, it's also imperative to use your voice to advocate for your patient when you see anything that can cause potential harm to prevent anything from happening because you are the patient's advocate. And that's it. Thank you so much for listening.